Far too often you hear about incidences of major password leaks and that users are subsequently asked to change their passwords. But why does this happen so often and is it possible as a developer to securely store passwords? Passwords are stored in databases, at least at every website or service with a significant number of users. To all developers who don't know already, don't store any passwords in files. Now, we take our database and want to assign the passwords to the users. Accordingly, we create a new entry with ID, username and so on for every user. Most important of all, of course, is the password. Oh no, there comes an evil evil hacker that wants to steal our data. Coincidentally, they know our pet's name, which we chose as the access password for the database. And in no time, they could grab all data from our database, including the user's passwords, perhaps even financial data or similar. It is obvious that this way of storing passwords is completely insecure and should never ever be used by anyone. Also, it would be smart for a service provider to choose a better password. By the way, there are still plenty of websites and services out there that store passwords in such a fashion or rather give them away. You can recognize them when they are so kind to send you your password in case you've forgotten it. You've got mail. Well, run as soon as you see your password fluttering in your inbox. Also, it would be nice to inform the administrator about this gaping security issue. So what can one do to prevent such a scenario? Hash functions are coming to the rescue. Examples for those are MD5, SHA256 or SHA512, just to name a few. There'll be a dedicated video about hash functions as they are quite complicated and have a wide variety of possible use cases. Let's take a hash function. Nowadays you should at least take something like SHA512 as it spits out rather long hash values and thereby is quite tedious to crack. That's because hash functions only work one way and can't be decrypted without testing all possible inputs. Using this hash function we encrypt the password the user provided during registration. As soon as they want to log in, we match the hash of the entered password with the value stored in the database. In case they should match, the user has submitted the correct password. This process works as the same input to a hash function always delivers the exact same output. Now the same hacker turns up again and as we still haven't changed the database password, they can download all entries again. It would appear that the intruder now stands no chance to read the passwords. However, there are databases full of hash strings and their corresponding input values. You can just search for the given hashed password and more often than not, you get the original password. These collections are especially widespread for MD5, so please don't use MD5 for securing passwords. That means we still need higher security. But how's that to be achieved? The solution is SALT. Who now wonders what a seasoning from the kitchen has to do with passwords is at the exact same point I was when researching this topic for my own website. Salting means to add something to the password in order to make it unique. For example, this could be the user's email address. Better would be a long string of random characters. The registration now looks something like this. First, the user signs up with their password and email. Second, this input is sent to the server. Third. The server now appends the email address to the password. Fourth, using a hash function, let's say SHA512, this string is now encrypted. Fifth, the server stores the encrypted password, username and email in its database. As soon as the user logs in, the process is as follows. First, the user enters their email and password as always. Second, the entered password is appended to the entered email address and this construct is again encrypted with the very same hash function. Third, the server queries the stored password hash from the database. Fourth, in the last step, the two password hashes are compared with each other. In case they are identical, the user is now logged in. This method has the benefit that every password hash in the database ought to be unique, so that they don't appear in the enormous collection of hash decryption tables. At the moment, this technique is practically impossible to crack and all services dealing with passwords or sensitive user data should use some sort of this encryption. However, looking at the growing efficiency of quantum computing, it could become dangerous for password sorting because highly optimized quantum computers are way faster at cracking hashes than any regular system. That requires us to come up with new ways of storing passwords in the future or throw them away completely in favor of something better. I hope this video could give insight into the topic of password security or even help you with your next project.